Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Up Your Alley. It's a podcast with two best friends. That's me. My name is Taylor Edgar, and with me as always is my best friend, Jake Baggett. Say hi, Jake. Hey, buddy. It's a podcast where we recommend things to each other, but we're not doing that this week, because this week is our 2023 year-end wrap-up slash 2024 preview episode. Yeah. We did one of these uh, last year this time. Just kind of a nice end-of-the-year time to reflect on what has come out, what we thought about it, things that met our expectations, exceeded our expectations, or ones that just weren't as good as we thought they were. <laughs> uh, so, Jake, mm-hmm. let's start probably with let's start with TV first. Okay, because I know you're not a big TV guy. Not TV too much. is something that I uh, I definitely spend more time binging shows than you do. Yeah, but I will say this: Have you gotten around to? We're recording this on the twenty seventh. Just yesterday, uh, the new season, the final season of Letter Kenny. Mm. One of our favorite shows uh, yeah. was released. Have you watched any of it? No, I haven't seen an episode yet. I finished it. Yeah, I am very sad. Is. Why? Is not good. No, oh. it's very good. Oh, <laughs> speaking of a show, so we've talked about it on this show a bunch. Letter Kenny is twelve seasons in. They're short seasons. It's not like twelve, twenty-two episode seasons, mm. but just so well written, so yeah. well acted. This show and the spinoff show, Shorzy, which we've talked about Shorzy as well. came out this year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Season two, I should say. Season two of Shorzy, which mm-hmm. you loved. Yeah, that was so, great. So uh, just start with that. Like, Shorzy, season two, you loved Shorzy season one. Mm-hmm. How are your expectations going into it, and how'd you like Shorzy season two? I was ready because, you know, Shorzy knocked it out of the park. Mm-hmm. Loved it. Yeah, I've seen that many, many times. It was better than it had weird. any right to be. Exactly. A spinoff from a from gag a, character yeah, that a character you never see his face. With the most annoying voice. Mm-hmm. And then he turns him into a very interesting character. Yes. With a funny premise. And then just the way that the, there's like no stakes, really. Mm-hmm. Like in the second season, like they're undefeated now. And the pressure is coming from within right. a lot. You yeah. know, they're doing great, but still they feel like they need to do better. Right. That's such a wild thing to like explore mm-hmm. as your problem. Somebody's having too much sex on your team. <laughs> they're just having too much of it, and we need you to stop. Freaking Dolo. And they get him to finally understand it when, he's, when he makes the sacrifice himself. Right. And it's just like silly but it's so funny and yeah. just they do a great job it's just as good as the first season i would say yeah i can't speak highly enough of both of those series and i won't give any spoilers for letter kenny but uh, i just had to binge it it's six episodes it ends so well and i will say this i think uh letter kenny shows how good of a writer jared kiso is who is the star of both shows and the creator of both shows uh, his writing in Letterkenny is fantastic. It's just quippy. It's machine yeah. gun, rapid fire, joke, 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 joke. And Shorzy then showed how good at writing characters he is. Yeah. Because, Actually, like I said, he took a character with no development whatsoever in Letterkenny. Yeah. And there is more character development in Shorzy than there is in Letterkenny. Letterkenny's been 12 seasons. The characters don't change that much. That one's more of a serialized show. You exactly. Know, you can sit down and watch a random episode, and then you'll have a random adventure, and it'll be fun. And also, Where Shorzy wants you to watch it from beginning to end. Yes. You know. And I'll say this. like Shorzy has two six-episode seasons. They're like It's like two three-hour movies, yeah. pretty much. Uh, Letterkenny, the way people put the... Uh, I think Netflix had a thing that The Office was the most streamed show. Mm. And it was just coming on that people just put on the office as background. Yeah. It, just while they're cleaning up their house or doing whatever, they just go right. to Netflix and put on the office. Having noise. Yeah. Yeah. Letter Kenny could be on in the background constantly. Yeah. I think the characters are just so different, so funny. It's got so much heart. The The guiding thesis throughout all 12 seasons of Letter Kenny is a repeated line, if a friend asks for help, you help them. Yeah. And it's a profane show about Canadian drinkers smokers in a small yeah. town and it's just fantastic it if no one's watched letter kenny i can say you should yeah you should from the first season you're yeah. still gonna love it because from the first season has some of the best bits yes. ever and it doesn't dip in quality at yeah. all it just they they discover new bits that they hang on to for a while yeah. and each time it's hilarious yeah 
there's some running jokes that if y- it's a really good show for seeing other people in the wild, like if someone else does it, like if you just yeah. walk up to someone and say, how are you now? And yeah. they say, good and you, you're like, oh, you're a cool person yeah. and I could talk to you now. Yeah, not so bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. So uh, other TV shows, I'm going to go through some of these because I know you haven't seen them. Uh, <laughs> the Mandalorian and Ah- ah- Ahsoka. Uh, came I out hear this bad year. things, so I did it. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I'll say this: Mandalorian season three, not the strongest season of the Mandalorian. Ahsoka, I liked. I think Ahsoka did a good job of uh, expanding on the Clone Wars stuff mm. because it's just one of those things where now people my age have to accept that Star Wars is not for us anymore. It's all kids that are in their early 20s and teens that grew up watching Clone Wars, that it's their stuff now, which is good. Okay. Because right. and it's fine. I know I'm not going to get you to watch it. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Uh, I mean, you can if you just tell me to watch it, which I'm, I hope you don't. I'm not going to because I don't want to talk to you about it. Because you don't want me to talk to you about it. <laughs> you know what? You're right. You're yeah. absolutely right. Which is the same yeah. reason I didn't make you watch Secret Invasion, which was not great. Loki yeah. season two was very good. Mm. I think that was the strongest thing from Marvel uh, TV this year. Um, which isn't saying much. Yeah, it's been kind of a down year for Disney. It's fatigue. TV. It's yeah. fatigue. They kept pushing them out. This whole formula is over yes. for me. After I went and saw Godzilla minus one, that's when I realized, oh, I just missed this type of movie. Yeah, I miss seeing something so grand and big, but it's enclosed in its own movie. Mm-hmm. It's driven by. Uh, a main character that is Godzilla. Godzilla mostly. <laughs> He's the main character that drives it. <laughs> it's just bombastic in a way that yeah. it fills a movie theater when you see it. Mm-hmm. And it's like it didn't need any lead in other than you know, you watch it to go see a Godzilla film and then you see like a fantastic Godzilla film instead yeah. of one of the mediocre Godzilla films that are out there. Which there are several. Yeah. And I will say this, looking at, because uh, I have our list up from our episode at the beginning of the year, mm-hmm. uh, that wasn't even on here. Like that wasn't on anybody's radar that that movie, or at least I'm sure it was on some people's radar. It was not on ours at I all. Yeah. That there was a new Godzilla movie coming out. And But yeah, I, th- I will say when, we'll talk about that when we get into movies, but that's probably one of my top movies of the year definitely one of the top i've seen in theaters yeah um but i'm just i'm over uh having these types of characters that i have to care about for a very long time Mm -hmm. and how they interconnect with a lot of other things it's a lot to keep track of too and there's just no reason for it for me anymore yeah and next month uh echo comes out on disney plus which has the return of vincent d'onofrio as kingpin so that's what they're hoping to make you watch the show. No, I'm going to watch the show. But yeah, because Vincent D'Onofrio is in there. He's Kingpin. And he's an amazing Kingpin. They just didn't do a Daredevil again, even though they could have just done Daredevil again. Yeah. Uh, three shows that ended, which I think they all three ended well. Uh, Succession, Ted Lasso, and um, I just saw it. <laughs> Succession, Ted Lasso, and Barry. Yeah, uh, haven't seen any of them. All three of them. Really well. This is why we're doing this first, because you're not really involved in this conversation. Yeah, this is just for other people to write in. Except for, I think, the last one we'll get into, which (laughs) is a show I will take full credit for getting you into, which is The Bear. Yes. Season two of The Bear. I need to finish that season. I have just two more episodes, I believe. Yeah. But that was an extreme surprise to me. How how, much you enjoyed it? How much I enjoyed it. Yeah. I thought it was just going to get the anxiety of the career. Right. Right. And they focus on that a lot in the first but couple episodes. What they do focus on is just how crazy a person is mm-hmm. on this. And they and not like crazy. Crazy is a bad word for it, but how passionate somebody yeah, passionate's is. passionate a better word for it. Yeah, because you're just so consumed mm-hmm. by your ability to make food. Right. And it's just the best portrayal I have seen of that yeah, in a long time. It's pretty high up there. I think... Uh, it's uh, And I'm sure people that have worked other jobs, I'm sure cops can watch cop shows and be like, that's not what that's like. And yeah. Doctors will watch you know, Grey's Anatomy and be like, this is all bullshit. You can take but a bomb out of somebody's body. Yeah. If that clip keeps showing up on Instagram, 
of there's a bomb in somebody in Grey's Anatomy. Damn funny. I don't know how it gets into my algorithm. And there's also that one where the guy's like, uh, we got a heart for you. And uh, like the guy's bringing it and then it he trips. trips <laughs> and then the heart just slides across. <laughs> and then a dog comes out and eats it. That's a, such a <sighs> random thing. And then so good. I get that clip in my algorithm and then I'll get that clip with like the AI narration. <laughs> and it's like, the man is walking for the organ transplant. <laughs> the man trips over someone else. Really? Uh, it does yeah. That? You know that AI generated voice? That's I know what that, is, but I don't. I don't have TikTok, so I don't really interact yeah. with it that much. Fair enough. But damn. But, well, speaking of the algorithm, and speaking of the bear, our clip on our TikTok, which people should follow us TikTok <laughs> at Up Your Alley Pod. Uh, for some reason, that's in the algorithm right now, and it's our highest viewed TikTok. I mean, everybody's talking about the bear again. Yeah, at time. Well, season three is getting uh, hyped up, right? Because so, uh, the bear was just in a movie, a wrestling movie, Iron Claw. Iron Claw. Yeah, which I would love to see. Haven't seen that yet. I'd definitely like to go see that too. Oh yeah, it's got the bear and it's got the Zac Efron. Yeah. So, uh, so going forward uh, into the bear season three, you think you're pretty stoked on that? Yeah, really excited for it. More than likely, what's going to happen is I am going to be distracted from seeing the rest of season two of the bear mm-hmm. until i see that season three's out and yeah. then i'm gonna go oh i gotta finish season two <laughs> so i'm excited yeah. for when that happens yeah uh so i i will say probably well we didn't really talk about this but the last of us if we're giving like for how it fared our expectations mm-hmm. i would say the last of us uh exceeded my expectations the most out of any show because mm-hmm. like succession I wanted it to just keep doing what it was doing. Barry, same thing. The Bear, because I was already a fan from the first season. Mm-hmm. All of those, my expectations were met, which I'm completely happy with. I'll say uh, pretty much all the TV Marvel stuff mm-hmm. did not meet my expectations. Mm-hmm. And The Last of Us, you know, exceeded them. I, I was, think it was really I good. That one episode, episode three, I yeah. think it is, with Nick Offerman. Yeah, and yeah, that's a great episode of television. Yeah, right there. And yeah. out of our uh, episodes that we've done, we've done a couple of TV shows that came out this year. None of which we actually talked about ahead of time. But uh, I got you to watch Bupkiss, which you were. Yeah, I was in. Yeah, in for Bupkiss, uh-huh. and. You got me to watch uh, Scavenger's Reign. Yes. Which I was big in on. Yes. I had no idea what that was going into it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And I think the TV show that we were both most surprised of that we didn't even talk about ahead of time was one of our episodes, Twisted Metal. Yes. Which has That's been very true. renewed for a second season. That's probably the biggest surprise to me. Was it came out of nowhere. That show is actually very, very interesting. And talk about something that was way better than it had any right yeah. to be. Anthony uh, Mackie, Anthony Mackie, and Stephanie Beatrice is so charming. Mm-hmm. I can I watched him. He was the only celebrity at the video game awards that I wasn't annoyed by his presence. <laughs> Fair enough, but yeah, I, I will say that <laughs> Twisted Metal came out of nowhere. If I had to pick, you know, something that people should go and watch because I didn't, I don't think it got the love that it deserved. But it got Twisted, enough love. Twisted so Metal. I'm happy. I don't know what they're doing at Peacock, but Pete Davidson didn't get a second season, and he probably wanted more money. They were like, "Please, we'll do anything. Just well, let's make." They probably Twisted gave him too. a lot of money off the, off the jump. Yeah, <laughs> because he's Pete Davidson, and but have, reviving a, essentially dead video game franchise. Yeah, and putting it on Peacock, just doing a good job. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, probably one of the best video game adaptations. <laughs> I mean, if you're just basing it on what the source material was, the, like, the level of the source were. material to the level of the TV show yeah. beats the shit out of The Last of Us. Because The Last of Us was a good show based on great source material. Yeah. This was a great show based on nothing. Yeah, the translation for, yeah. is one of them was just English to English, <laughs> you know, and yeah. the other one was like creating poetry yeah. out of just nothing bubkiss it's like reading Not tea leaves show. where you're just like nonsense at the bottom of a <laughs> yeah. cup and you're like all right well this could be something <laughs> yeah uh upcoming tv shows speaking of video game adaptations next year is uh fallout not interested it even has kyle mclaughlin in it not interested and it's got uh walter and it's goggins. Got walton goggins in it not interested really yeah not interested it's not huh. gonna do a good job you don't think so no it's not it can't really because amazon's making it and I, this show well like fallout is against what amazon is amazon would be the enemy in fallout yes it would be the reason 
or it'd it be would, one of those rad. It'd books. be the reason why uh, the world is such shit in the future. Amazon would make the bunkers. Or the reason why the world is continuing to stay shit in the future. Oh, okay. It wouldn't be like, yeah, it, yeah. It's unbelievable that and they're the ones making it. I think so. They're going to sanitize it, and it's going to be about uh, nothing. And I really don't know how well it's going to adapt a uh, video game that's so open ended. Like The Last of Us worked because it's it following a pretty strict narrative. Like there's no choice. Even at the end of The Last of Us, there's no choice at the game. You, Can I tell you, you the, the story of the first Fallout? The first, I know nothing about the first Fallout. Yeah, it's yeah. got a good story actually. Fallout One, like it the been isometric. Great, you like, can make a great TV show out of it. Yeah, the isometric one. Uh-huh. It's uh, your vault dwellers, right? Mm-hmm. And you live in the vault for hundreds, hundreds of years. And uh, your water machine, it's called the Gek, it breaks. Okay. And so the elder is like, "Look, we need to get this thing fixed. So we're sending you out to go and see if you could find anything. Yeah, maybe another Gek." Maybe somebody that could fix it. Maybe uh, parts to fix the gek. Something to help. Something to help. And then that's when you're like, I'll do it. And then you go out and you witness this wild world and what's happened to it in the absence, you know. Of people. Yeah. And and you're, yeah. Is it set in a city like Vegas and like Fallout 4 is set in Boston? Yeah, it's set in the West. Okay. Like somewhere Generic in West. Nevada. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Okay. And the big thing is, you know, there's, you know, these wild societies that you run into that impede your way. Right. But one of the biggest twists, one of the beautiful twists is you find how to fix the Gek. You bring it back to the Elder and they're like, thank you. You saved us for hundreds of more years. Don't come in here. You've been out too long. You, oh, shit. We cannot have you be a part of this anymore. That's how the game ends? Yeah. Holy so shit. you're exiled. That sounds you're awesome. pushed away. Huh. So you can do it, but mm-hmm. it's the whole society part on the outside that they're going to mess up, is what I'm saying. Like, the overseer is going to be a character, and they're not going to... But they're going to have that big really old care. power suit, and they've got that made up, and it's practical. I and don't it, know if they're going to get the Brotherhood of Steel going, correct? They, no, they've well, they've shown the pictures of it. It looks, it looks cool. good. Walton Goggins doesn't have a nose, but... That's pretty fun. Yeah, it, they... I miss what ghouls used to look like. Yeah? They looked horrible. Well, just ghouls. rotting flesh. Yeah. But now they're pink. Oh. Huh. All right. <laughs> it should be gross. I want to be throwing up watching this show. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens with that show, but I'm g- probably going to make you watch that. Damn. Uh, upcoming TV shows for next year. Breeze through some of these real quick. Echo, like I mentioned previously. But. Yeah, you're not going to watch that. Uh, this is from Time Magazine, so I'm sure I'm missing some. And this is, I think, mostly new shows, not things that are coming back. Yeah. Um, on Apple TV Plus, January 26th, Masters of the Air, which is a um, continuation from Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks, her Band of Brothers. Whoa. Which Band of Brothers in the Pacific, I think, are two of the most Band incredible cool. feats of yeah. TV filmmaking. And I guess it's more just filmmaking. It's not like TV long form storytelling. Yeah. Band of Brothers is amazing. Ridiculous. So I'm totally mm. on board for that. Um February second on Prime Video, uh Mr. and Mrs. Smith series. Oh which I would not be excited about except for Donald Glover's in it. You keep trying to sell me on him. On Donald Glover? <laughs> keep Are trying you not to sell me on, on Donald Glover? He's good. He's great. I love community. Yeah. He, well all right so Donald Glover Charles Gambino is kind of fun. He's an amazing music- the thing is Donald Glover is an amazing uh amazingly talented person. He can do pretty much anything and he doesn't he's at that level of fame and success because as successful as Atlanta was and critically acclaimed as Atlanta was yeah. and that was his baby. He already made his big passion project. Every album is a passion project but on TV he made his passion project. Uh-huh. He doesn't strike me as the type of person to do things for a paycheck. So I think this is either a ridiculous amount of money, which I don't think it could be because it's Mr. and Mrs. Smith on Amazon. Amazon's got a lot of money. Yeah, but I don't think they would throw that much money at Mr. and Mrs. Smith because, like, Apple is throwing money at, like, Harrison Ford and Jason Siegel to be in series. Like, I'm I don't just, know I, okay, I don't know the financials of it, yeah. but the fact that Donald Glover chose to do this show yeah. on Amazon is 
interesting to me. I just yeah. Uh, another thing that's interesting to me, uh, February twenty second on Netflix is the live action Avatar: The Last Airbender series. Uh, people that know yeah. way more about that series than me say it looks good. Yeah, which I haven't watched I was the told live to watch action the cartoon. Yeah, I no. Nah. Yeah, <laughs> it's whatever. But I'm interested in it. But then again, I said the same thing about the live action One Piece, and I haven't watched that yet either. <laughs> so uh, there's a show coming out on FX and Hulu called uh, Shogun. Have you seen the trailer for that? I think I sent it to you. I don't think so. Maybe uh, it's based on the James Clavel no- or Clavel novel. Uh, it's feudal Japan. Looks really good. Like they're putting a lot of money into it. And I know you love feudal Japan stuff. I do love feudal Japan stuff. Yeah. But so I typically like. 60s and 70s. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Shogun's a book from the 70s. Yeah, but I like it made from, like, you know, yeah. like Tashir Mifune in it or wow, or something. Pulling that. <laughs> no idea who that person is. Oh, yeah, you do. Do I? Yeah, Tashir Mifune. No idea. He's uh, the, the samurai guy. Picture oh. samurai in your head. Dumb. That's Tashir Mifune. Oh. Yeah. That guy. <laughs> yeah, that guy. That, that did nothing for me. What He's the in fuck Seven are you Samurai. Okay. He's in the Samurai Trilogy. Dude. He's um, Yojimbo. Okay. No. I'm not, I haven't watched all these Ron. things. I didn't know who Zatuichi was before you made me uh, watch it. Yeah. So, no. yeah, it's, uh, that's not in my wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Should have said Up Your Alley. That's the name of the show. <laughs> uh, and also. Look to the offshoot. <laughs> Is that my wheelhouse? In my wheelhouse. <laughs> Uh, another show that I'm stoked about coming up, and I'm, I'm sure your first response is going to be like, you don't care about this, but I, I do. On Max. Uh, I'm such right a now, cynical guy. I love it. You are. I don't know what happened to you. you used to be I've such always a, been cynical. You used to be such a sweet boy. I love it. And uh, But coming out, uh, TBD on Max is the series The Penguin. Which is starring, hmm. starring Colin Farrell as the Penguin. This is a good idea, maybe. I really liked... I rewatched uh, The His Batman, the penguin. second half of The Batman on a flight uh, yeah. when I was coming back from Florida in the summer. And I was just like, I forgot how good and how much he disappears into that movie. Yeah. And He's watching, great as the Penguin. I yeah. love his portrayal of the Penguin. I think watching that... I just and, really like that movie. It's such a good movie. Yeah. It's a, it, it's, it's a little long. It's about 45 minutes too long. Batman... And Commissioner Gordon's mm-hmm. relationship in that movie top is notch. top notch. Some of the best we've seen on screen, mm, probably ever. Yeah, for live action. I mean, I love uh, what's his head as Gary Com- Oldman. Yeah, Gary Oldman. J.K. Simmons was a great Commissioner Gordon too. But the way that he, uh, this Commissioner and Batman, the way that they work together, mm-hmm. was very great like detective yeah. style i'll tell you what i like lieutenant gordon more than i like commissioner gordon i'll feel I, you. I like a jim gordon that's got something to prove yeah i will say uh what's his nuts from the oc that played jim gordon on gotham uh-huh. did a great young uh, jim gordon i'll give it to you i've yeah. seen a couple episodes at your behest yeah and it's the, a great show. it was pretty enjoyable i mean there are parts of that show that suck but it was a great show I mean, yeah. and lastly um Final season of Curb Your Enthusiasm is coming out this year. Yeah, isn't that surprising? Always going to be good. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be funny. It's going to be great. There, I, I, there's no way. This is wild. Yeah. The thing is, I think that show is bulletproof just because coming off of Seinfeld, which had a notoriously bad finale, mm-hmm. and how the whole ethos of this show is how terrible situations Larry David gets himself into, there's no way this finale can be bad. Yeah, it's because if it's the worst finale, yeah. then it's perfect. Yeah. Like if, if it's the fucking everyone goes that was du-, like if they Game of Thrones it, House of the Dragon season two is coming out too. But fucking who cares about that? Mm-hmm. If they Game of Thrones it and everyone's like this is the worst ever, they're like perfect. Mm. It's perfect that that's what Larry David did. Yeah, yeah, I like it because Larry David doesn't do it until he's like I have good idea. Right, and then he that's he what just he has it. an indefinite hiatus, and then he's like, all right, we'll get another season. Going. Yeah, he's yeah. like, no, that's a good idea. We'll do yeah. that. Yeah. All right, so that's TV. Uh, Let's get into (coughs) movies, but real quick, we're going to have a brief word from our sponsor for this week's episode. We'll be back in just a second. Is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Regardless if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety, or if you're just a human who lives in the world and is going through a hard time, therapy can give you the tools to approach your life in a very different way. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. 
BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible, and that's important because finding a therapist can be really hard, especially if you're limited to the options in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with your therapist, and there's a link in our description. It's betterhelp.com slash Allie. That's better com slash Allie. Clicking that link helps you support this channel and also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist to see if it helps you. And because finding a therapist is a little like dating, if you don't fit in with your first therapist, and that's common, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without the stress of insurance or who's in your network or anything like that. I'm a big proponent of therapy, and anybody that knows me can attest to the difference that it's made in my life the past couple years, and I recommend this program to anybody. So if you're struggling, please consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash Allie. That's better com slash Allie for 10% off your first month. And we want to thank BetterHelp for supporting our podcast. We're back. All right, let's get into movies. Now, uh, we had one episode this year that was our up and out that we tried to record uh, going to and from a movie. We yeah. thought that was going to be a long-running thing. We did it once. <laughs> Things get in the way. Yeah. Uh, we did that for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Damn. Did that was not this year? meet my expectations. It was fine. It was, but my expectations were very high. Yeah. I thought it was going to actually start setting up Jonathan Majors as Kang, and this was going to be a whole thing. <laughs> and now it's uh, due to wow. other things that happened. Yeah. That is what not What a horrid happening. thing, huh? Yeah. So that's going to change. And now they're talking about Ryan Gosling being uh, <laughs> in the Marvel Universe as somebody. And I wonder who. It'd be it's funny Kang. if they made him Doctor Doom. It'd be funny if they made him Kang. It'd be funny if they made him Doctor Doom and he just wears a mask the whole time. <laughs> like, like you'd never see Ryan Gosling's <laughs> pretty face. <laughs> that would be great. But no, I, I think... It was fine. It wasn't anything... But no. it was f- other than fine. But I, I think, in again, this that is was on, another world. You know what I mean? This is just on me that it was just, like, it did not meet my expectations. I was not, you know, especially in retrospect. Uh, mm. And seeing another Marvel movie that came out this year that exceeded my expectations was Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Haven't seen it yet. Still haven't seen it? No. It's on Disney+. Plus. I really should watch that. Huh? You really should. It's good. It's James Gunn, and I really love him. Yeah. And I just, this is one of the movies I just haven't seen yet. It's bittersweet. And I will say this, though. Guardians of the Galaxy as a whole is mm-hmm. an amazing trilogy. Yeah. But number three was my least favorite of the trilogy, which does not mean I did not like it. I can understand. I know uh, what you mean. The Guardians movies for me are ranked in the exact same way as the original Star Wars trilogy. I like the second one the best, then the first one, yeah. then the third one last. But I love them all. Yeah. So it's Return of the Jedi. I love Return of the huh. Jedi. I just don't like it as much as The Empire Strikes Back. Um, I can understand that. Movies we talked about but did not see. I didn't see um, <laughs> Little Mermaid. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I completely forgot. Yeah. Didn't see it. <laughs> uh, Transformers Rise of the Beast. Did Why would not I want to see that? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, oh, on this list, we had Craven the Hunter. That is pushed back until next year. Ugh. How'd you Did like you the- watch that trailer? It looks awesome. It looks like it's dumb. We have that movie coming out next year. We also have Madam Web coming out in February. Ooh, did you watch that trailer? Yeah, I said it to you. The only thing is it's got Adam Scott. Yeah. As ben a young Uncle Ben. Or uh, the same Uncle Ben, but from a different... I don't know. I'm utterly fascinated by what this movie is. <laughs> My Be- mom died studying spiders. <laughs> So dumb. <laughs> so dumb. She, that lady that they got, I can't remember her name. She's from uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades of Grey, yeah. She is just a uh, a charm vacuum. She's a blank canvas of a person. Yeah. It's just it's like, just what not gonna, much going on. She's just a pretty In lady. her performance. Yeah. So uh, it's a choice. It's one of them. Why, why are they doing this? Yeah. Why can't they just make it a good movie? Because I don't know what Sony's doing. He, just, just, just stop it. He didn't learn anything from Morbius. No. They literally didn't because everybody was making fun of it so much that they thought that they could re-release it in theaters and yeah. then it bombed again. And yeah. they're like, I don't get it. And it was like, how How do you not get that? I'm going to learn the same lesson from our TikToks. I'll be like, everyone likes the bear content. Maybe we just start doing the bear stuff. Let's talk more bear. <laughs> <laughs> this is now the bear podcast. There's a bear in the alley. <laughs> I'd actually do that. I love the bear. Um, 
<laughs> Another movie that got pushed back, it's coming out in February as well, is Dune Part 2. Yeah. Ready for that. Yeah. yeah. I, wish it, I wish it was out now. I would go watch that movie yeah. right now. Uh, looks fantastic, but I guess we'll talk about that when it comes out. Uh, movies that uh, I think met my expectations, but I was happy about that. Yeah. Uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse went into that with very high expectations. Yeah. Loved it. I went in with no expectations and came out really loving it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oppenheimer came in with high expectations. Yeah. Really liked it. I didn't watch it. Uh, Barbie, I had middling expectations. Yeah. It's fine. It's good. Yeah. I thought I it'd be really good. I really liked that movie. And it was good. Yeah. <laughs> but as far as expectations are, yeah, right there. I think my biggest disappointment of the year, and I hate to say this because I did have this listed as my second most anticipated movie coming out, uh, was Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I was. I completely really, forgot that that came out this year. Everyone did. Harrison Ford did. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't that it was bad. I don't even think it's the worst of the movies. I still mm-hmm. think Crystal Skull is probably the worst of the movies. Wow. Um, but it's it's just, I thought, I don't know why I had this. He's just too old. This for glassy, you know, optimistic view where it's like, they're yeah. going to get it this time. Indy's going to be back. Just He's just not. Get a young actor. I was to just be the, indie. the kid waiting for, you know, his dad to pick him up and just sitting on the <laughs> stoop. And I'm like, Indy's coming back. <laughs> he's going to he's gonna take me back to my childhood. And the, no. He didn't. It's he, still Disney. He could have been a James Bond type character. Yeah. Where he's just filled in with another they missed, actor. They missed the window on that, yeah. though. And, and then I you think, just have fun adventures with a, a, a great time period. And, you know. I forget where I read this or saw the interview, but I think Spielberg and Lucas had talked about doing that. And that's why they had River Phoenix in The Last Crusade. Is they were going to move the timeline back and have River Phoenix do movies as Young, Young Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones, and then River Phoenix died. They made a TV show called Young. Right, Indiana but they Jones. were going to do it movies, like, uh-huh. and he was going to be the legacy character that he was going to mm. take over doing it, uh, which is a bummer. But you know, man, yeah, yeah uh, movies weird. that exceeded my expectations. Oh, also, Aquaman: Lost Kingdom has not come out, or we haven't seen it. No. And I haven't seen Wonka, but I want to go see Wonka. I'm going to go see Wonka this weekend. I have no interest in either. <laughs> uh, movies that exceeded my expectations. Yeah. Um, Super Mario Brothers movie. Okay. I thought it was going to be good. Yeah. It was great. Damn. I really enjoyed the Super Mario Brothers movie. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, the Marvels exceeded my expectations. I have no interest in seeing the Marvels. I know. Wait. It's because you hate women. It, that's part one. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong. Just, that's yeah. a big part of it. <laughs> yeah, don't get me wrong. But, but no, that's not the reason. Uh, I thought it was good, and I think it was just because I had come off of Secret Invasion with Marvel and yeah. just being like, There's, this isn't going to be good either. And it was great. I really liked it. I really liked uh, the Miss Marvel series. And, mm-hmm. you know, everyone is really great. Brie Larson and uh, the rest of the cast just have great chemistry together. Samuel L. Jackson's back in good form. Loved it. Um, hmm. a movie that I think knocked both of us away with how good it was was uh, Dungeons and Dragons: Honor Among Thieves. Yeah, seeing that uh, the trailers for it, I was just like, "Yeah, look at this fucking piece." Of I shit. believe that they're making a sequel now. They are. Yeah. So that's just beautiful news. Yeah, because it's, that's a word of mouth thing. Everyone should. Yeah. And Chris Pine was a real champion for that movie too. He was like, "I really yeah. liked making this, and yeah. I want to make it make but, more of these." Yeah, there was just so much fun to be had. Yeah. God damn it. I'm just so happy that these types of movies are that's, getting in there. That's definitely a wreck from both of us. If you haven't seen it, it's worth your time. I think it's streaming yeah. on Hulu now. I don't think so. I think it was Amazon. Amazon but or Hulu. The it's, problem it's is streaming we somewhere. can definitely look it up yeah. <laughs> so we don't spread misinformation. But it's streaming but somewhere. If you could see it, see it. Yeah. Honestly. Because it's just a lot of fun. It's family fun too. Mm-hmm. But it, it, the jokes are so good. And the action's actually really fun. Yeah. Michelle Rodriguez is in top form. Yes. So it's super well written. Chris yeah. Pine is as charming as he's ever been. Yes. And there's moments where I was laughing so hard that I didn't know what was happening in the next scene because I couldn't stop thinking about yeah. what just happened. And it's definitely worth a couple of rewatches too. Yeah. Like Yeah. Just hell hell of a good movie right there. Uh the last one I want to talk about that came out this year that is my list for exceeding expectations which mm-hmm. was also a recommendation that we had which was the flash now shut up 
It exceeded my expectations. I hate you. What are you talking my about? My expectations for this movie were very, very <laughs> low. So I'm not it saying that it's my favorite movie of bad. the year, but the difference between where my mm-hmm. expectations were and how I w- received that film, mm-hmm. it's the greatest difference because I thought it was going to be garbage, garbage, garbage. There are some redeeming yeah. qualities to that movie. My movie of the year is definitely Godzilla minus one. Yes. I saw it twice in theaters. You it saw was, it twice now? Yes. Wow. And uh, I went in thinking, if it's as good as Shin Godzilla, you know, that's a triumph. You'll be happy with that. And then it was just as good, if not better. Huh. So I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It just captures every single thing that I love about Godzilla. And it it's pace is wonderful yes and just the way everything happens it i just i just get that feeling that i should stand up and be like yeah Yeah, like a lot that's definitely one that came out of left field uh can't Mm -hmm. recommend that movie enough to anybody i feel like i'm missing something that we saw probably talked about Mm -hmm. a movie that i watched this year Mm -hmm. that i recommended to you that i loved was crime wave I feel yeah. like that movie is a part of me now. So that's new to you, and yeah. obviously it's new to me as well. I mean, it's from 1984, I think. Yeah. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. but uh, Sounds right. Yeah, I just watched it this year, and it feels like it feels awkward that I went this long without seeing a movie that yeah. is so right for me. That was one thing about that episode is I was shocked that you had never seen that before because yeah. that is like a movie that was made in a lab for you. Yeah. It's beautiful so. and funny and wild and irreverent, but heartfelt. It's just brilliant. Yeah. So out of the movies this year that affected me, that was probably the one that affected me the most. That makes sense. Like, I had dreams about that. It was movie. not my favorite. I talked about it. And I know. But, yeah. But I was happy that I got to wreck it to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was definitely <laughs> worth a watch. Like, I really liked it. Um, I'll say probably out of... I guess we didn't see it in theaters, but movie that felt like it was custom made for me and came out of nowhere for me was uh, No One Will Save You. Yes. I've, I've rewatched yes. that since we did the episode about it. Yeah. Great movie. Yeah. That like, movie just, was. It's such a tightly out of made nowhere, movie. Talking about out of nowhere. That for movie, sure. I heard nothing about it, and then no. I watched it, and it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So I think that would be probably my recommendation. If you haven't watched No One Will Save You on Hulu yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, do that, and then also coming out of nowhere, not uh, was uh, the Please Don't Destroy movie that I recommended yes, for you as well. That was a very enjoyable movie. I think the way that Godzilla came back and it kind of was a return to form for thank God, and like you said about Dungeons and Dragons, thank God they're making this kind of movie again. Yeah, I feel the same way about the Please Don't Destroy movie. I'm like, good, I can feel you. I'm like, can we just get some low budget, just funny, just fun comedy yeah, movies, just really funny guys with a right. good premise? Because the just highest budget, some funny stuff. like comedy ish movies now are like. Marvel movies that yeah. they try to make be funny. Yeah. But we don't need that. Like, you can just make a funny movie. It doesn't have to be a licensed character. It could just be some funny people doing some funny shit. Yeah. Uh, so, movies, upcoming movies, uh, one that we talked about already a little bit, Dune 2. Yeah. Yeah. Just get that to me as quickly yeah. as possible. That movie um, was really good. Another movie that I do, I know we're going to talk about on this podcast, it was in a trailer that we uh, both saw for Godzilla minus yeah, one. Yeah. It already hit me. The beekeeper. Yeah. Comes out on January 12th. Yeah. We're probably going to be watching that movie. Eh? So if you haven't seen the trailer for the beekeeper, pause this podcast right now, <laughs> watch the trailer for the beekeeper, find the <laughs> longest one because the one I saw in theater is probably about three minutes long <laughs> and just watch it. My, I am so stoked about this. Going back to a recommendation that we had, a movie we forgot to talk about, Meg 2, The Trench. Yes. Just Jason Statham doing stuff. I read a great tweet Yeah, that said uh, they really should just name these movies Jason Statham's third movie or something. Because like, <laughs> you tell me you're going to go see The Beekeeper, I don't know what's going on. But if you're telling me you're going to go see Jason Statham's 12th movie, I am right there. Yeah. So the premise for The Beekeeper is that Jason Statham's doing Jason Statham stuff. He's, he's beekeeping. He's keeping bees. And <laughs> but he's he, also a beekeeper. He has a, a neighbor who gets scammed. <laughs> the Nigerian prince scam. Yeah, essentially by <laughs> this dick... I forget, it's not... Is it Jay Baruchel that plays the guy? If it's not Jay Baruchel, it's a Jay no, Baruchel. I don't think so. It's a Jay Baruchel type. It's 
immaterial to the rest of the story. Yeah. Jason Statham it's a, in the trailer. It's a business that does this. Right. It's like a uh, real a, finance building. bro douchebag yeah. vibes. Uh, Jason Statham goes to this building in the trailer. <laughs> And it can't be a spoiler because this is all in the trailer. The whole movie's in the trailer. Yeah. It might just be a trailer. I don't know if this is a real <laughs> movie or not. It might. If I woke up from a fever dream and just ha- regurgitated this to <laughs> someone, everyone would be like, Taylor, you drank too much medicine. It's just, and now you're just having hallucinations of Jason Statham <laughs> doing stuff. Because he, but, the neighbor, gets scammed, loses yeah. her life savings. Yeah. Jason Statham goes Dies, to the call penniless. center. Yeah. Jason Statham goes to the call center. Burns it down, yeah. kills people, yeah. just to say you got to stop scamming old people. Yeah. It's like a they distilled everything that enrages boomers on Facebook and made it into a Jason Statham <laughs> revenge movie. And I am so it's fucking so, excited to see the beekeeper, the beekeeping element of the movie, and how they're forcing it right. in there is so wild because that's the twist and one it's of the weird things that is, a... is he brought honey to a fight right <laughs> and he just hit somebody over the head right with a jar of honey and then someone says in the trailer i forgot honey was flammable yeah. and then he sets the person <laughs> on fire it's such a wild i wild idea. Wait. i mean if we're making a list right now of most anticipated movies i'm really high up there with it's the most perplexing I might do a double feature like Barbenheimer for Beekeeper and Dune 2 and just sit there and watch both of those movies. Um, other things coming up. God damn it. I cannot wait for that. Um, I just can't believe that that movie's being made. Madam Web, we already talked about. That's in uh, February. No, thank you. Ah, you're going to watch it. Ew. Oh, Dune, Dune's not until March. Fuck, I thought it was February. Well. That made me a little sad. Huh. Uh, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is in a remake of Roadhouse. Ew. Yeah. Why would you remake that movie? I don't know. It's already perfect. Yeah. Oh my god. Have you seen Roadhouse? I've seen Roadhouse. Patrick Swayze? Yeah, how would they why would they make that again? I don't know. It I'm actually kind of insulted that they would think I would watch that. Well, I'm gonna make you watch it now. That's ridiculous. Um, another thing that you're insulted that they're making is Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Another trailer you saw. I'm not in- insulted, but I'm just so confused. I don't get who Ghostbusters is for anymore. It's just something now. It's, it's I, a world frozen over. It's like the joke in Tropic Thunder. Yes. Where they ran out of sequel ideas that they froze the world. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ben Stiller, fake Ben Stiller movie. Yeah, who yeah, let yeah. the fridge open. Ah. Yeah, it, I feel like it's just that... With the new Ghostbusters and the last new Ghostbusters, I didn't hate. I thought it was an okay movie, but it's just bust like the cold. Yeah, you got to bust out that cold, baby. It's a little bit uh, day after tomorrow. Yeah, but, oh, not a little bit. It feels it's like exactly that. day yeah. after tomorrow with New York freezing over. It, but it's just that Stranger Things got popular, and they're like, "What do we have that's like this in our intellectual property?" Yeah, and then Ghostbusters are like, "Oh yeah, let's do that, and let's actually get one of the Stranger Things kids." Yeah, let's get Finn Wolfhard. Yeah, mm, it's whatever. Um, just, that is is just no. In April coming out, we have Godzilla X Kong: The New Empire. Not I interested. Th- I don't think uh-huh. it's going to be. I think so. Monarch Legacy of Monsters is good. I'm about halfway through the first season. It's yeah. good. It's not great. It's good. Yeah. But I think Godzilla minus one kind of turned me off this new Godzilla universe. Yeah. Because I was like, uh, right. and then I saw the trailer and like Godzilla's running like at a full pace like with next to king kong and he's like jumping through king kong's jumping through the air and hitting people with a bone axe and i'm just like "Mm, yeah not for me i'll take the emotional gut-wrenching story in post-war japan just yeah Yeah. just humanity yep forming together i feel like to fight this yeah monster the people that make the monsterverse movies probably saw godzilla and they're like oh fuck we don't have to be spending 250 million dollars making these movies they were sitting back just putting down their cocaine mirror and yeah. going, oh, I wish I had more cocaine. Well, that's what's something that people Isn't that... that uh, all of us? Well, people that have some cocaine are never like, that's enough cocaine. <laughs> it's usually, can we get more cocaine? <laughs> that's, that's enough cocaine. Um, <laughs> Nobody's ever uttered that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks, awful. <laughs> um, in May... Another trailer we got recently, uh, Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. I did watch that. Very into George Miller. So of expectations course. are high for that. Yeah. Just because how good Fury Road was. Yeah. Um, a movie that we will talk about next week, the sequel to that, is coming out in April, which is Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. I don't want to. 
Don't mm-hmm. spoil how he felt about Rebel Moon. We'll be talking about, talk about that it. next week's episode. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I, I cannot to wait to hear what you have to say about it. Oh. Uh, in July, Deadpool 3. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Deadpool 3. I'm fine. I'm Why does every picture look like they're in a quarry? Because Any what, behind the scenes? It's a, the whole movie takes place in the quarry? No, but I'm sure it's played up for gags. And then I think it's really funny that Ryan Reynolds had people uh, Photoshop in fake leaked spoilers because there's a character oh, there's a character that was in like someone with the telephoto lens shot a picture of them and it's not a huge spoiler mm-hmm. but it's just like oh Ryan Reynolds like it's really a shame that people are taking these pictures and spoiling you know characters that are going to be in it it would be a real shame if people photoshopped in other people so when you google Deadpool 3 set leak photos these images came up first with the fake thing and that's all it is on Google oh. image search now Good for Ryan Reynolds. How to weaponize it. Yeah. It's Sabretooth. Sabretooth sent it. <laughs> Leave Schreiber Sabretooth? No. Nah. Oh. First uh, X-Men Gen Sabretooth. So. The one that looks like the lead, uh, lead singer from Metallica? Yes. And yes, he does. <laughs> that wow. one exactly. Uh, what else we got? Uh, in October, Joker. Full adieu. Sequel to Joker. You know what comes out next year? What? Uh, the People's Joker. The People's Joker? Yeah. What's the People's Joker? It's a movie about the Joker. The Joker Joker? Yeah. Batman Joker. Yeah. What the fuck is this? It's a weird movie. It's the first I haven't time seen it yet. It. The People's Joker? Yeah. It's something that I would like to is see. Is it a fan film? Yeah, basically. But it's getting like theatrical releases and things. What the fuck is this? It looks very interesting. The People's Joker. It's in 2022. It, it came was out. made in 2022, but they're starting to actually be able to show it in theaters and stuff. It's a queer coming of age story parody superhero film. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. What the fuck is this? It seems like a great movie. I am super interested in this. Yeah, there you go. Bob Odenkirk's in it, Maria Bamford, Tim Heidecker, Scott Ackerman. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. On board for this. The People's Joker coming out this year. I want to see that when it comes out. (laughs) Uh, November 8th. Hopefully, because at least we're close enough to DC, hopefully it shows up in some of uh, yeah, those theaters. In some art house theater up yeah. there. Yeah. It'd be nice to check that out. Um, Schedule right now <laughs> for uh, November 8th. Untitled Venom Let There Be Carnage sequel. Really? Yeah. That's happening? Yeah. I really like that the discourse about that m- those movies are turning around to, these are pretty good. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because these are pretty good. I thought it was great. We've yeah. seen both of them in theaters together. So I'll say this. And both of them are good. Pretty good. <laughs> I'll say that I started to appreciate it a lot more after I played uh, played Spider-Man 2. Because yeah. Venom's in Spider-Man 2. It's not yeah. Eddie Brock. But Venom in that is just, it's not a character. It's just a, 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 suit. a dark force. The Venom yeah. in the Spider-Man 2 game is kind of treated like uh, the, the bad guy in The Fifth Element. Yeah. It's just like it's this just force that's coming and you know taking over and making everyone right. bad. It, ch- it plays on your right. anger and stuff. Where the Venom comics... It's are, like Spider-Man 3, the movie. Exactly. Where, it, it, where Venom's not a character. It's just yeah. that person but bad yeah. is Venom. Uh-huh. Whereas in the Tom Hardy movies, Venom is a character. Yeah, like Venom's They have Venom. full conversations mm-hmm. with each other. And then it turns to the we are Venom at the end. But it's not... Venom just isn't that person being bad and now they're Venom. Mm-hmm. Venom's its own thing, which I think is the highlight of the Tom Hardy movies. Like, yeah. it's Tom He's an interesting, going- funny character and their banter together is wonderful. Yeah, it's great. It's Tom Hardy acting his ass off. Um, in November 22nd, a movie that is scheduled for release, Gladiator 2. Oh, no. Yep. Oh, no. Yep. Uh, <laughs> in some of these... <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite so far is That's that we just said <laughs> gladiator <laughs> 2 we said oh no and then we're moving on <laughs> listen anything can be good anything can be good oh no <laughs> it's so sad that's a really good movie that first gladiator now this is a wikipedia article so i some of these i don't think have been officially put out yeah um like rumored i guess it says December 13th, Lord of the Rings, The War of the Rohirrim. Now, they did say, WB did say they were going to make more Lord of the Rings films. Yeah. Because they have to. Because money. 
Yeah. Because you got to keep that money. Uh, those first three Lord of the Rings movies are perfect. Like, yeah. I think they're some of oh, the yeah. best films. I've Not just the those. best adaptations ever. I think they're some of the best films ever. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you make another one, I'll try anything once. Uh, mm-hmm. I liked Rings of Power. It wasn't as good as the movies, but also it was kind of a new story, but interesting. Um, Mufasa the Lion King. No interest. The story of a young Mufasa? Yeah. Come on. And Come Sonic the Hedgehog on. 3. I'm in. I'm in. I uh, am so amazed that Sonic 1 and 2 are actually really good movies. Yes, and I think that's something that we talked about when we talked about the TV show Jury Duty. Because yeah. James Marston is in that. Mm-hmm. Just an infinitely likable guy. Yep, very true. Yeah. Talk about a charming vacuum. This guy is a charm... Oh, yeah. Charm vomiter. He's a charm white hole. He's just <laughs> shooting yeah. it all out of action. Uh, so, yeah, that's upcoming movies. Um, out of the movies that... I was reading something, I think, about... James Marsden. Uh, awards that they were giving out, and one of them was the biggest poop in a toilet <laughs> in a TV show. Like, legitimately? It, well, no, like in a TV show. Oh, okay. And they were like, they're giving it to James Marsden because of that poop. <laughs> God damn it. That show was great. That show was really good. Yeah, if that's another one that we both highly one recommend. One of those things that is pro- I don't think you could ever capture that magic no. again. That dude's doing commercials. The guy from Really? Good for Trinity. him. Yeah. Because it's, oh, again, just a, a really uh, good guy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, out of the movies that we did episodes about, uh, Meg to the Trench is up there for me. I think I said pretty much everything I needed to say yeah. about that, and it's why I am so excited I, about it, The Beekeeper. It feels like he can't keep getting away with this he will. type stuff, you he know? Will. But every time, like, the Meg, I thought we were just going to go watch a silly film, and we did. Mm-hmm. And then The Meg 2, I thought they were trying to exploit our love for this thing, mm-hmm. and they did, but they uh-huh. did it good, Yeah, you know? But... It, it, and now they're trying the beekeeper on us, yeah. and it's just like... We're going to watch it. Jason Statham is just like, just I'm going to make you do it. Let's just watch Jason Statham doing stuff. So I'm just, I'm amazed. Jason Statham starring in boomer revenge porn <laughs> is going to be a great movie. I can't believe it. I can't wait. All right, let's get into uh, video games. We don't have time for all of them. We talked about a couple video games on this show, mm-hmm. most of them recommended by Jake. Yeah, uh, one I recommended to Jake was Sea of Stars. Yep. Great. Yep. Great game. Sad news about a YouTuber that was featured in that game. Yeah. They took him out of that game. They did? Yeah. Oh. They yanked him right out of that game. Ooh. And then they were just like, probably not a good idea to just put a YouTuber you like in video games. (laughs) And we're like, yeah, probably. Yep. There's some controversy. We said some nice things about this guy on this show. They are retracted. I mean, I enjoyed the show when I watched it. Yeah. I don't condone his... uh, Michael actions. Jackson has some great songs. <laughs> I don't condone I'm his not actions. Lie about oh yeah, hundred percent not. That's, that is a wild, first, wild thing. First three seasons of House of Cards, Kevin Spacey acts his ass off. <laughs> Cannot condone his current actions. Uh, speaking of YouTubers going wrong, Coffeezilla put out a new one today. Oh yeah, that guy's gonna get killed by somebody. Uh, who, who did he? Uh, now some Another guy that thing? Uh, is a. British YouTuber who's got a crew called The Misfits, and then he started a clothing company, Revolt, oh. which makes merch for uh, other YouTubers and streamers. Oh. And it was just like a Ponzi scheme, and he was blowing all the money, hoping that the next merch drop would pay for that one. And oh. Coffeezilla just calls people up, yeah. and I'm just like, God damn it. That's like some of the most hard-hitting <laughs> journalism. Yeah. I will say this. Something that uh, we could hold off on video games for a second, because it's another <laughs> thing I want to talk to you about. Uh, next week, we're talking about Jake's recommendation for me, which was a documentary on Defunct Land. Yeah. And, and Channel Defunct Land. And channel Defunct Land. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, about the Disney Channel theme song. Yeah. I will say this. I think this year, doing the show every week, and we've picked a couple YouTube things, especially YouTube documentaries. Yeah. And I've picked some documentaries made by studios. Uh, BS High, which was a good one, about the um, fake football team. Yeah. Uh, Just Finn. Yeah. Uh, Finn, which was a couple years ago, but that's Eli Roth. We did Mm -hmm. uh, just a couple weeks, or last week, the uh, Cult of Mother God, Love is One. Mm -hmm. And... I think that the YouTube space has almost exceeded documentaries. Yeah. I think it's just an amazing way for indie documentaries to be made. 
The yeah. one about the Disney Channel thing, I'll say it right now. I've already watched it twice. Yeah, right. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, um, right. You we, didn't expect it, did you? <laughs> we did. Uh, it's not really a documentary, but just long-form YouTube uh, lasagna cat that you recommended for me. Another thing that I think is a work of art. It's definitely a work of art. It's yeah. insane. Uh, we did that one the same week that we did uh, the documentary Untold, The Rise and Fall of Anne 1. Another documentary. Good. Very good yeah. documentary right there. And I will say, I think uh, my favorite documentary that you recommended to me this year was the In Search of the Flat Earth. Yeah, by sure. Folding Ideas. Yeah, incredible documentary that's available on YouTube. I think everyone should go watch it now. Yeah. Um, Dan Olson is a, a very educated man. Right, who works really hard. And I think I found that YouTubers uh, making documentaries about anything. It's a perfect example when we watched Primer. You had me watch that. Uh-huh. Great time travel movie, probably mm-hmm. one of my favorite wrecks of the year as well. Damn, cool. But I think what led to my enjoyment of it is just watching that movie. I would have gone, huh? Yeah. And then I watch two twenty-minute YouTube documentaries about that movie and yeah. how that movie works. Then I go, mm-hmm. huh? Yeah. It just increases cool the stuff, appeal, right? Of it. Yeah, yeah. A hundred percent, definitely cool stuff. Uh, who's your favorite YouTube channel that you've come across this year? The one that I came across this year was Bobby Fingers. And that is the one that... First of all, it's a friend of the show, Bobby Fingers. <laughs> As everyone knows. Well, I'm sure he did he's, contact us. I'm sure he's not listening anymore. <laughs> but he did once. So he friend, did contact us. Friend of the yeah. show, Bobby Fingers. Oh, he, Top notch. It, that is uh, something where you could sell... He has a passion for something, and... For weird things. He does it like. really well, yes. and he is just a very engaging person. Mm-hmm. And he... Cares about his craft, yeah, uh, uh, to a wild degree. Yeah, so it's just captivating to watch what he does. I think Bobby Fingers is great, and then through uh, just watching things like Folding Ideas and a guy we talked about a couple weeks ago, H Bomber guy. That's new yeah. to me. He's not a new YouTuber by any means. Yeah. Great, yeah, and he's gone back and done old. I watched a documentary he did about ukulele when ukulele came out. Yeah, and him just comparing that to Banjo Kazooie. One of my favorite video games of all yeah. time because it's the same kind of company that made it. And it's weird having this back catalog of mm-hmm. people that have been putting out this level of work. Yeah. It makes me optimistic that maybe, who knows, in fucking four years, someone might look back at this and be like, oh, these guys have been doing a podcast for you know this long. And here yeah. they are talking about Return of Obra Din. Yeah. So let's fucking watch that. Sure, sure, sure. And uh, my favorite new YouTube channel to me is uh, Caleb Hammer. Mm-hmm. I've mentioned him before. He has a series called Financial Audit mm-hmm. where he just goes through people's bank statements and berates them. <laughs> it is weird combination of what I enjoy about like roasts. Yeah. Just making fun of people. It's with financial, like sound financial <laughs> advice that he gives. And it's also just kind of uh, uh, misery porn. Yeah. Where, like, some people are just, like, you know, they have hundreds of thousands of dollars in credit card debt, and he's just like, then why are you going to Arby's? <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, why are they going to Arby's? And I will say this. I've started paying more. Like, he says, go to Rocket Money and use that as a budgeting app. Yeah. I started doing it. Yeah. It fucking works. Yeah, I use it. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. We should get them to sponsor. I would love for them to sponsor us. Fucking it is actually money. a product that I use. Absolutely. Yeah. We're endorsed by Bobby Fingers <laughs> and Rocket Money <laughs> <laughs> and BetterHelp. Uh, but, yeah, I think as far he's close to a million subscribers now if he's not already at it. Yeah. But I definitely think that Caleb Hammer is just a fucking infinitely entertaining guy. Okay. He's just no nonsense. He gets very shrill and high-pitched when he gets angry, <laughs> which I find infinitely entertaining. <laughs> and some of the people he has on there are people that are in bad situations, have been dealt a bad hand, and he has sympathy and caring for them. And some of them are... You're an idiot selfish, for doing this. Yeah. Selfish people that are just... Like, there was a girl a couple weeks ago... And she was just like, I just don't feel like the universe wants me to have a job, like a regular job. And he's just like, no, you have mm. to. That's the way it works. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody feels like they shouldn't have a job. <laughs> well, yeah, I won't say that. 
but but no, she's just a, a no job. She's just a yeah. pretty girl who was getting people to give her money, yeah, and then not paying taxes, and then thinking that mm. she didn't have to pay taxes. Mm. And I love it. So Caleb Hammer, big wreck for me. Bobby Bobby Fingers, big wreck from both of us. Yeah, and I think any of the YouTubers we talked about in any of our old thing, uh, folding ideas. Yeah, H Bomber guy. I'll throw it out there for CoffeeZilla, too. <laughs> Fascinating. Uh, any of those guys. All right. Now, let's get into also my favorite new YouTube channel, youtube.com slash upyourallypod, where you can yeah. subscribe to us. There you go. Do that. God, the call of action nice is late one. in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. It's there. You found it, and you went for it. Yep. And I'm proud of you. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Jake. Yeah, buddy. Uh, so, video games. <laughs> there you go. Please uh, breeze through a couple that we talked about, but I didn't end up playing. Assassin's Creed Mirage, haven't played. I don't want to. <laughs> Didn't get great reviews. Dead Space Remake, did not play. Mm, I'm interested, but I'm okay. Yeah. Waiting. Uh, Hades 2 did not come out this year. Yeah. So that's a bummer. Um, and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League also did not come out this year. That comes out next year, though. Yeah. It comes out in January, I believe. Well, and I think that was pushed back for good reason. Because huh. they actually feel like they're trying to make this game good. <laughs> so, Good. <laughs> Uh, it's rock steady, so like, it, it should be fun. It should right? be. Doesn't that's what, that's all I'm be. feeling. Yeah. It's we'll rock see. steady. It should be fun. Uh, another game that I didn't play is Hogwarts Legacy. You didn't want to play that game. No, I never got around to it. I don't think I ever will. I really don't really have any interest in it. Unnecessary. Uh, game that I played really hard for a month. Did you do your PlayStation Wrapped? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, I had one month that was dominated by Diablo 4. I don't think I've picked it up since. <laughs> I beat the story, and then it started the first thing. It's like, this is the season of blood and terror or whatever it is. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, it's just more of the same, huh? I'm pretty sure every single person did the exact, same exact thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, great for a month. Yeah. It was very fun just jamming buttons. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, really kind of lost its uh, luster a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, Spider-Man 2, we've talked about. Yeah. Really it- enjoyed it. I will say, mm-hmm. if we're going by our expectation scale... Met my expectations. Yeah. But my expectations were high going in. Yeah. And met the expectations perfectly. Well, wonderful. Jedi Survivor, it might be because I've talked about it that I rushed through that game. Yeah. Uh, because that game came out and I was just like, all right, I just got to get this, you know. Yeah. Just what power what game was coming th- out? A game we'll talk about in a minute. Okay. So, and... I haven't felt the need to go back to it either. So I'll say that one probably didn't meet my expectations, but uh-huh. it just made me question if I liked the first game that much. Mm. But good story. I like the first game. Yeah. yeah. Um, a game that I still have not played, but I think it is your game of the year, would be Baldur's Gate 3. That is the game of the year. It's not so, my game of the year. It's just the game of the year. So that is exceeding your expectations. You know what, what I just what started What do you think about doing? going into that game? Like did you like were you expecting it to be good? Had you already had like the hype built up before you started playing it? Cuz if I went to play it right now, yeah. my expectations are this game's going to change my fucking life. Yeah. So, I went in knowing that it was going to be a good game because everybody all my friends were already talking were you, about it. Were you day 1 with it or No. Okay, a couple All weeks. my friends were already talking about it, Got saying it. that this game is, you know, incredible. So, I finally got around to buying it and playing it, and they're absolutely correct. And I just recently started playing it with another person, and it makes the game ten times better. Really? Yeah. Just having another person there that's doing their own thing, Mm -hmm. and we could work together, but they could just go off and do their own thing. I could walk in on them having sex with a bear and be like, oh, uh, I'll I'll come back. Just like real life. Just like real life. (laughs) It's so much fun doing that. Because there was one time where I was talking to somebody, and... I was talking to a character, and the person I was playing with was like, stall them. I want to steal everything that's in their room. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So I'm just sitting there doing more dialogue options, just role-playing a guy that's like, and, and I can just at, see her in, in the time? background, just running around grabbing stuff. Oh, that sounds so fucking fun. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. That game, I am so happy that it's doing so well, because more. I hope more games are inspired by what you can do in this. Nice. Yeah. So... It is game of the year. Not my game of the year, but it is game of the year. Well, uh, how do you feel that compares to your uh, what was your most anticipated game of the year going into this? Uh, mm-hmm. What we talked about in January was the Resident Evil 4 remake. I can. That was a game that I was going in skeptically, right. thinking that it wasn't going. Because Resident yeah, Evil 4 is one of my favorite games. You were on the fence about it just yeah. due to your love of the original. Yeah. Because I was like, I don't know how you can make this experience any greater than what you've done. Right. And they did. 
Huh. They made a different experience, but uh, they made a fantastic one. It, right. it was a great game. I cannot believe the amount they went out to make this a different game to stand on its own. Huh. So it's one of those games where it's a brilliant and awesome game by itself that you can go back and play Resident Evil 4 and have a completely different, well, not a completely different experience, but a different experience that stands on its own as well. So what they accomplished with that was awesome. So does that give you hope or add to trepidation going into a release next year for Metal Gear Solid 3 Delta? That's not, that's Konami, that's not Capcom. I know, but just that style of a game that you love doing a new remake of it. Like, if, are you like, maybe they could make Metal Gear Solid 3? Like, do you think they could do with Metal Gear Solid 3 for you what they did with Resident Evil 4 for you? Because I know was, MGS3 is one of your favorite games, Yes, too. if Capcom was doing it, I would say I'm interested. On what board. I think, I'm, I'm going to buy it because it's of Metal Gear Solid 3. I'm going to buy it, too. What I think it's going to be is just a one-to-one recreation, just mm -hmm. prettier. Like and that's what they're going for. They're not going to be uh, evolving anything. Uh, everything is going to stay the same. It's so, just going to be nicer to look at. Yeah. And I which will be fun. I don't think I need that. You yeah. know, I have Metal Gear Solid Three. It, they just released it again. I almost bought it on the Switch the other day because I was bored. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's a fantastic game. Yeah. One of the, the most quality games ever made. Mm -hmm. But if they approached the, it like Resident alone. Evil, yeah, Four did. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be amazed, but I just I do not think so because I think they just see that Metal Gear Solid Three is one of their uh, highest grossing games. Yeah, and they're like, why don't we just release that again? Mm. They've, they've done it a one. couple times. Just release yeah. that again. I mean, that's what they did with Resident Evil Four. Well, that's what they did with Red Dead Redemption One, and we both bought that too. Yeah, so. Red Dead, they didn't even try to upscale. Anything. Yeah, and then two weeks afterwards, they're like, you can run at 60 frames a second now. You're like, mm, yeah, neat. <laughs> Thanks for that. I need to get uh, gambling to get the platinum trophy in that. I just love gambling. Yeah. I love gambling until I have no money getting up, punching somebody in the face, and running away. <laughs> just like real life. And then I just come back later. I'm like, sorry, guys. Got a little out of here. <laughs> I got 80 bucks now. Let's do this all over. <laughs> um, a game that I recently just started playing that was on my list for uh, most anticipated. And I will say this, met my expectations. Yeah. Dead Island 2. Yeah. I've, it went on sale in the PlayStation Store for 40% off, and I yeah. was like, you know what? I need a game to just play right now, this kind of lull time of year. Uh -huh. Love it. I'm loving every minute with Dead Island 2. Okay. I love the fuck out of those first two games. They're not groundbreaking. They're not, the story's not great. Not First even two games super memorable. Dead Island. Dead Island and Dead Island Riptide. Yeah. And it's just more of the same. It okay. looks better. You can drop kick people, and then you can ninja like Luke Kang kick people. Hmm. And it's just prettier graphics, prettier settings, more <laughs> of the same. I'm like, good. This is just what I wanted. It's exactly what I wanted it okay. to be. I well, think it's worth everyone playing. You should get it because you can play online. I bought it so that yeah. we could play it, buddy. And of course, mm. nice. I can't wait. Yeah. And of course, I picked the character that's like the cool uh, punk guy from Britain. Because yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's of course who I'm going to pick because <laughs> that's just like me. Uh -uh. And mm. in the first uh, major cutscene before you get out into the bigger world, the character Sam B from the original game yeah. shows up. Who do you voodoo? Who do the voodoo? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> and he's back and he talks the exact same way. He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm just like, God damn it. I love Sam B. That's ridiculous. It's so great. And it's so gross. <laughs> it's so gross. Like, you hit a zombie in the face with a shovel and their mm -hmm. jaws, like, hanging down. Mm, and then cool. you hit him in the arm and, like, the skin's going off. And I'm just like, ew. I did enjoy that first game until I got to the jail. And then I didn't enjoy that first yeah. game anymore. Nope. And it gets. But if they balance it out better. I think I'd I've, love to play it again. I think I've replayed that game to the jail like yeah. three or four times. Yeah. And when you get to the jail, you're just like, hey, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really it's care about like, this It's just like, this anymore. is too much. Yeah. There's a boss fight. The first big boss fight that you do is you keep hearing in a hotel this... Um, hoodoo, your voodoo, bitch. No, no, no. That there's a wedding that got interrupted by the zombie apocalypse. Yeah. And you keep hearing people talk about this big bitch of a wife. Yeah. And then she jumps down and attacks you, and it's one of the... Um, zombies it's like one of the giant ones that you have to beat the fuck out of but it's just this jacked bride okay <laughs> and it's 
it's just fun <laughs> and it's playing like a one of the songs like a first dance song while yeah. you're doing it and you've got a machete that's got a nine volt battery attack to it it's just it's fucking great okay but you talked about your game of the year i will say for a game that exceeded my expectations that wasn't my game of the year i haven't talked about it yet you haven't talked about your game of the year no what was your game of the year alan wake 2 oh shit yeah that is my game of the year so for your expectations going into that because i feel yeah. like uh, my game of the year i've said it before yeah. tears of the kingdom yeah my expectations for Tears of the Kingdom going into it were super high. Yeah. I think Tears of the Kingdom exceeded them. Yeah. I think Tears of the Kingdom was a better game than I thought it could possibly be. Mm-hmm. I think it is probably the best. No, I'll say it. It's the best game on the Nintendo Switch. Oh, sure. Uh, I think it's the pinnacle of that system. I mm-hmm. think anything on the Switch is downhill from here. <laughs> That's really sad. <laughs> that being said, Alan mm-hmm. Wake 2. Yeah. Your expectations going into it, super high. Very high. And they they were exceeded. Shattered. Yeah. So you had the same experience with Alan Wake that I did with Tears of the Kingdom. Basically. I yeah. couldn't... I, I thought I was just going to get a nice resolve to a game that uh, some of us really enjoyed the next 15 chapter. years You're ago. You're going to get the next chapter. Yeah. yeah. I was going to get a, 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 finally an ending. And I got something that exceeded every expectation that I could have for video games, period. Jesus. So I was blown away. Huh. I'm reading. I went back to my Alan Wake uh, special edition that came with a book called Alan Wake Files. Is that PS3 first Alan Wake? Uh, Xbox 360. It was a Microsoft exclusive, and then it came out to the PC later. That's PS3 era, though. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, it's got a book called the Alan Wake Files Uh with it, and I'm reading that now. Wow. And... The way that it's lining up so well with Alan Wake 2 is rewarding like crazy. Huh. It's just, I'm very, very happy. Well, I mean, yeah, I think we're, we're in the same boat with yeah. our two games of the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's just an outstanding uh, year for video games, for sure. Yeah. To mm-hmm. say nothing of the video games that we've recommended for each other. Mm-hmm. You went on a tear, had me play the original Max Payne. Great. Yeah. Uh, Ober Din. Liked it. Sea of Stars. What do you mean you liked it? You loved Obra Din. I did. Yeah. Uh, sea of Stars, we both liked. Yeah. Nothing compared to my favorite thing you recommended uh, video game-wise, which was The Outer Wilds. Yes. Wonderful God game. damn it, that game mm-hmm. just beats the shit out of most other indie games. Yeah. As far I, and I uh, watched... Most other games. Let's give it some proper credit. Yeah. It's just a fantastic game. You're right. Game. You know what? It's not fair calling that an indie game because yeah. it beats the shit out of... I've had more fun in that little tiny solar system yeah. of Outer Wilds than I have in No Man's Sky. See what I mean? And No Man's Sky is apparently infinite and you can do whatever you want. There's I enjoy fucking, No Man's Sky. Yeah. I would play Outer Wilds again. I'll tell you this. Mm. I haven't played Starfield. Yeah. I don't think I could like Starfield as much as I like Outer Wilds. <laughs> I think Outer Wilds is just the perfect amount of fun, creepy... Scary, mm-hmm. cute. And you have DLC to play, bud. I know. Haven't mm-hmm. gotten to it yet. I've been fucking killing zombies with shovels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man's got to mm-hmm. do what a man's got to do. I hear you, man. Um, as far as upcoming video games uh, for next year, uh, what are the big ones? Uh, Tekken 8 is coming out. Another fighting game. Oh, we didn't talk about Mortal Kombat 1. I really liked Mortal Kombat yeah. 1. I think Mortal <laughs> Kombat 1. Uh, I played it with you for I a think, little bit. I think it met my expectations. And I was just like, oh, okay, that's going to be good. Uh, Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. Uh, we already talked about yeah, Grand Theft Auto 6 not coming out this year, but we did get a trailer for that. Yeah. Super stoked for that one. Uh, on the 22nd of March is Princess Peach Showtime, the hmm. Princess Peach game. Yeah. Again, I think okay. the Switch has done everything the Switch can do. <laughs> there is nothing that Oh, will- you got a thousand year door to look forward to. You're going to love that. It's a remake, though. You're gonna love it. It's it's not nothing's going to beat Tears of the Kingdom. You're just gonna love Thousand Year Door. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Um, what else do we want to get into? Oh, there's a remake of Death Stranding. Sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> sure. I love Kojima. Yeah. I do. But, um. Okay. So yeah, I think that pretty much wraps up the year. Oh, I would say one thing that you recommended to me that was uh big for me yeah. was Eight Billion Genies. Right. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that was beautiful. There's been a couple books that I've read. Eight Billion Genies was a new one to me. I'm glad I got you to read that. Yeah. 
I've also been taking advantage of Spotify's audiobooks. Yeah. Um, listen to the Hepatitis Bathtub and Other Stories from the Road, which is the No Effects book. Yeah. Fucking and entirely engrossing. R- and written by No Effects or and read, about? Written and read by No Effects. Okay. It just get, bounces back and forth between members of the band, each writing a chapter and telling the stories. And it's great because, like, sometimes one band member will be telling a story and then the next chapter is the next band member saying that's not what happened (laughs) (laughs) it's just really fucking fun uh we've also recommended a good bit of podcast to each other Mm -hmm. you turned me on to behind the bastards oh yeah sure which god damn it knew you'd love that one i'm a big fan of that i'm Mm -hmm. looking through our old episode just trying to figure out not things from this year but that you've recommended to me yeah that were impactful impactful to you Mm -hmm. Music-wise, you gave me Cassiopeia. Yeah. Big fan of Cassiopeia. I'm happy to hear that, buddy. I put Cassiopeia back on repeat a couple times. Now we're talking. Uh, Built to Spill as well. It's been a big year for music between the two of us. I recommended to you... uh, Yeah, Wet Leg was great. Was that this year? Yeah, Wet Leg's great. And also you turned me on to uh, Dr. Game Show. Yeah, Dr. Game Show's great. Uh, This year was uh, Times New Viking for you as well. Mm Mm-hmm. That's one of my favorite bands. And uh, Rocket Juice and the Moon, another good one. Oh, hell yeah. To say nothing of all Affleck April, where I've uh, not only turned you on to four great Ben Affleck things, but also got you to watch Reindeer Games. Phantoms is number uh, one. just in rotation now. I would love to watch that again. Yeah, That movie is just really, really good. Yeah, so that's your favorite Affleck thing. Yeah. That's top Affleck. Um, We watched uh, Mulaney. Uh, Baby J. Oh, that's right. I forgot to talk about stand-up. That was uh, amazing. Let me see if I can pull up that stand-up list that I had earlier. <laughs> okay, so I'm a big fan of stand-up comedy. Like I've recommended a yeah. bunch of bunch of them to Jake's, and uh-huh. uh, seeing all the comedians. So a lot of comedians are put out specials on YouTube as opposed to just being on Netflix or HBO. Yeah. Um, out of the ones I've seen, I have not seen all of them obviously mm-hmm. and i'm sure there's a bunch of people on here that are like oh you didn't see this guy's youtube special or whatever and i'm like no um disappointing uh stand-ups well some of them that i haven't seen russell brand had one on that was on rumble yeah good for him oh apparently he's another person there's been a lot of people that have turned out to be shitty people and he's been a shitty person for a very long yeah, time but i didn't know <laughs> <laughs> and when i don't know <laughs> yeah i feel you i mean forgetting sure marshall is so good yeah other than that, I don't know anything about him other than he's kind of a shitty person. Yes. Not kind of. It turns out he's he just is. like a shitty person. So John Mulaney's Baby J. Yeah. Um, that's probably top tier. That's top five. Yeah. Top five just for me for sure. Wildly wonderful. Yes. So a comedian that I've gotten into this year, he has uh, a special on YouTube and he also has two crowd work specials on YouTube is Mateo Lane. Mateo Lane, he's a, from Chicago. He's a New York comedian now. He had uh, Hair Plugs and Heartache was one of his specials, and he has two crowd work specials on YouTube. Mm. God damn it. He is one of the most talented people in the world. He's an artist. He's a trained opera singer, and he's a comedian, and he has like a cooking show. He's an infinitely entertaining person. He's great on any podcast. Mateo Lane, I cannot recommend highly enough. Even just his crowd work specials, he does like an advice show. Mm-hmm. So good. He's just greatly entertaining. I watched a TikTok, actually. Of Mateo Lane? Of, uh, oh, shoot. What's his name? He does uh, the WTF podcast. Mark Mark Maron. Maron. Yeah. He did a TikTok, his first TikTok. Oh, boy. Of doing crowd work. And he's like, what's your job? What's your job? The <laughs> banker? That's fucking stupid. That's one. <laughs> I've got one. <laughs> um, specials that were... All right, so my top four would probably be uh, Mulaney. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed Pete Holmes's new special. Pete Holmes's new stef- special. Pete Holmes. You back? His new special yeah. is really good. Yes. Yes. Uh, I will say Shane Gillis's new special was very good. Yeah. He, for someone that is probably just getting better with every special for his brand of comedy, he's one of those people, if, he, <laughs> if, he, if he's not for you, I get it. He's not for everybody. <laughs> but if you like what he does, he's only getting better. Same thing with uh, Todd Barry had a special, uh, Domestic Short Hair. Again, Todd you Barry. watch that. You didn't watch it? No, I should. Yeah, you should. I, could, I completely forgot that he had a special. Yeah. 
Todd Berry, again, if you like him, he's at the top of his game. Todd Berry's a very funny guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's great. Um, Trevor Wallace is an interesting guy. Are you familiar with Trevor Wallace? None time. So he has a podcast called Stiff Socks. He's got popular on TikTok in YouTube shorts. Mm. He has a special that came out on Amazon called Pterodactyl. It's good, but he's one of the people where I'm like, I'm not sure if he's going to focus more on making videos and doing that sort of thing or stand-up. If he focuses on stand-up, he's going to be good. Yeah. He's, he's in his 20s, but like mm. for a new special, pretty good. Hmm. Uh, Mike Birbiglia, we talked about, his yeah. new one. Uh, not really good. a stand-up special. I would one say show. in my uh, – Top tier for this list for someone that's just consistently good. Tom Segura put out a new special uh, oh, yeah. in July. He's up there for me for just his joke telling and his sense of humor is really up there for me. Uh, Louis C.K.'s new one that came out in April. Yeah. Same type of thing. He's more on the decline of his career. I am just not interested in these people anymore. I understand. And you don't, you're don't. you not interested in Chris Rock, which I completely understand. Yeah. Um, I think these people are too rich and out of touch to actually be any type of interest to me. Yes. Except for... Nate Bargatze, who Nate Bargatze had a, he had a special is fantastic back in January, and he's great. And that also special it should be called very special because it's so good. Yes, he's very good. That's on uh, his new special, newest special, Hello World, is on Prime Video, and he's got a bunch on Netflix as well. Yeah, and also way back in January, I thought this came out like a year ago, but I guess technically it did almost come out a year. <laughs> uh, Andrew Santino, who's a very funny podcaster and actor you'd recognize him if you saw him he's in uh dave he's in a bunch of fucking tv shows and shit mm. like that red hair big beard he has a podcast with bobby lee from mad tv yeah and he's just he put out a special just great straightforward stand-up punchlines are fucking killer and i love andrew santino huh. and also uh my other i should have talked about this with youtube i guess when we were talking about podcasts uh, top of his game, still new podcast from Daniel Tosh, yeah, called Tosh Show. Daniel Tosh disappeared for a couple years because he got bought out of his Comedy Central contract. Mm. He interviews people that he finds interesting who aren't famous. He interviewed like a wellness guru. He interviewed a, <laughs> a Paralympian that was has no legs and runs. He interviewed his wife's gynecologist. And for my money, Daniel Tosh uh. is just still one of the funniest people. It's been a while. Check out Daniel Tosh's podcast. It might mm-hmm. have to be a recommendation for you one time. You might have to have to recommend it yes. to me. Yeah. If you like his sense of humor, I'm just happy we'll he's see. back. And yeah. also, speaking of things that are back, uh, South Park has a new uh, special out. Yeah, not uh, suitable for children. So fucking good. Like, yeah. they, they just keep getting better. Another I thing that I just fell off. Yeah. Yeah. I might have to get you to do that if I ever make you watch... Uh, paramount plus again oh and jim gaffigan had a new special out <laughs> yeah you you yeah. said good things about dark that. pale that's high up mm-hmm. there on my list too jim gaffigan just being a fucking funny guy yeah still talking about food what's a bushel basket i like that <laughs> i when he says that all right well this is our uh end of year recap slash look forward episode hope everyone enjoyed it if you have anything that you really enjoyed this past year that we didn't get to uh, or something that you're really looking forward to next year, just send us an email up your alley pod at gmail.com. Be sure to tell your friends about the show. Be sure to uh, subscribe to us on YouTube and Spotify. It really helps the algorithm. Like and share with all of your friends. Thank you, everybody, for listening for a whole fucking year. Yeah. Whole calendar year of this podcast it. and then some. Yeah. And we're going to do another one. Damn, son. All right. Thank you all for listening. Bye, Jake. Love you, brother. I love you, buddy. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.